I'm supposed to do Just drive around the fairgrounds another time or two Where am I gonna go When the girl behind the counter at the coffee shop gets tired of me hanging around Nothing left to say, trying to get away I'm bored out of my mind And I've changed all the light bulbs And had this conversation about three million times or more Guess I walk around the grocery store again Oh, this don't feel like living It's just surviving I ain't going nowhere just driving Good morning everyone. How you doing? We got a very special birthday today. Josh Thevenin? Is that you say? Joshy Thev. Happy birthday, man. YouTube chat, Serena Marie, it's a pretty name, Jeffrey Luoma, Lauma, Kyle, Kyle said he watched the Momentum video yesterday, thanks Kyle, Scott, Norm, Real D, Jill, what's everyone doing, how you doing, Uncle Toph in Periscope, he had a nice bowel movement this morning and we're all happy for him, Kyle, Periscope, Todd Father on Facebook, Lillian on Facebook. Good morning, everyone. How you doing? I am so tired today. Need, need, uh, this season has taken away getaway days. The way, the way talking Yanks works is we record at the end of every series. Usually the end of every series is a day game, getaway day, and then we record, you know, four or five at night. Now, since it's a shortened season, there's no getaway days. All the, they're just at night, so we're recording until midnight every time. Oh, KFC's in the chat. What's up, KFC? I, too, enjoy the seven-degree weather today. It's been nice. Now, strap in for the weirdest show in the morning. Music. A random-ass town in America and their history. A random baseball player. Their story. And then uh, a book. But today I did a documentary because I was too tired to think. Too tired to think about anything. And the damn Bluetooth thing won't work, which I sat here just hitting the button seven times in a row. Uh, I used two sound effects, and that's what's really got me whatever. That was Robert Ellis. He sings songs. I like him. Fucking something's going on outside. I think they're sliding the dumpster around. The random town of the day today is Walla Walla, Washington. Walla Walla Washington sounds like a name straight out of a five-year-old's mouth. I guess it was the name of the Native American tribe that lived in that area, but it definitely can't be because what I read was that it translates to water everywhere. And I don't know how translations work, but how could Walla Walla, the same word twice, translate to, it was even more than that. It was a place of many waters. How could Walla Walla translate to place of many waters? Doesn't add up. Doesn't add up at all, unless it literally means water, water. And then we just made the translation sound nicer for them. Or the original actual name wasn't Walla Walla. It was probably like something else. Jonathan, were BBD's legs up, though? Oh, I'm just reading the chat now. Just reading the chat. Anyway, Walla Walla, Washington. Here you go. This is where it is. It's, uh, it's, what, it's 54 degrees there. And to be honest, I'd rather that. I'd rather it be 54 degrees than 70. I just, if I have to sweat when I take my dog for a walk anymore, I'm just not going to enjoy that. That that sounds shitty. Um, all right. This is the town, Walla Walla, Washington. I read that people from Walla Walla, Washington, when they type at, type it out, they type it out as W and then 2, the number 2. Like I'm heading to W2. And that's a little too much. Just say Walla Walla. Uh, what's this strip of land? How's that part of the town? It's farmland and circles. 
Drew Bledsoe is from Walla Walla, Washington. Walla Walla Country Club? That's a great name for a country club. I guess Walla Walla just kind of works. Walla Walla Fairgrounds. The whole place is like a children's book. Walla Walla High School. What's the Walla Walla High School mascot? Walla Walla Wallabies. Walla Walla High School mascot. Walla Walla Blue Devils? Man, some high schools just suck at naming their teams. The Walla Walla Blue Devils? How do you not go with, like, Wallabies or Walnuts? That would be awful. Don't do, don't do Walnuts. Walla Walla, Washington, the Blue Devils. Terrible name. They don't even have a Wikipedia. There's nothing about them. It's a bad name. Anyway. What was the high school we did yesterday? It was equally as upsetting of a mascot name. The Blue Devils. I played for two different teams called the Blue Devils in my day. Um, Walla Walla East, Walla Walla This, Walla Walla That, Walla 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 Walla. The original name of the town was Steptoeville after Colonel Edward Steptoe. Steptoeville. That's a shitty name. Good job by them changing it. It was changed to, oh, hold on. This may be, this may be what I'm talking about. It was changed to Wailaptu. Wailaptu. W-A-I-I. So give that your best effort. A lot poo. Oh, someone in Periscope said the Walla Walla Warriors. And yeah. Yes. How does every senior class not petition to change their name to the Walla Walla Warriors? Walla Walla Blue Devils, terrible. WWBD, Blue Devil, yeah, Blue whatever. Devil. Anyway, um, here's a fun story. The the uh, the Pope, the whole Pope, he uh, set up a diocese in Walla Walla. He was like, Walla Walla, we got to go uh, convert those motherfuckers to Catholicism. Let's go beat him into submission. So he sent up the whole diocese. He sent him out there. And then also this guy named Marcus Whitman and his wife arrived. And they, you know, tried to set up a mission. And they wanted to convert everyone to Christianity, all the Native Americans there. And then a disease epidemic came out. Like, maybe just flu. Maybe, you know, we're going through an epidemic right now. Whatever. Pandemic. What's the difference there? Anyway. Um, and the Walla Walla natives were like, wow, you guys brought this disease to us. So they killed those two guys. And then the diocese was like, oh, we don't want to be here anymore. And, uh, then they probably acted like the Indians were savages. Well, they probably did bring the disease, different peoples and stuff like that. I told you, I'm reading that book all about the Catholic church. Um, remember I told you guys, I'm reading that book about the Catholic church uh, history in California and how they just kind of the missions and stuff, the ugliness of it. That's probably what happened there. Um, they say the current, the fort, the original fort is restored. Many of the buildings preserved the current fort, Walla Walla, Fort Walla Walla. There was a gold rush that made it the biggest, largest city in all of Washington. And at one point it was slated to be the new capital of Washington, Walla Walla, the capital. That'd be cool. And then a huge earthquake struck in 1961. Dude, I've been doing this thing on all of my shows where I look at a date and I just straight up say all the wrong numbers. It's 1936. I just said 1961 for no reason. Uh, they felt the aftershock of the earthquake for several months. It was a bad one. Here's, here's some Walla Walla stuff. It's just beautiful. Walla Walla Blue Devils, awful. Walla Walla Warriors, fantastic. You know what I'm pretty interested in? The Walla Walla High School cheerleading team cheers. Like, how many fun cheers did they come up with Walla Walla? Go Walla Walla. If I had my Bluetooth right now, I'd say I'd play the rabbit hole song, but I kind of... I'm over the drone footage. Walla Walla High School cheer team. Walla Walla. Wow. They went to U.S. Nationals. 
Congrats. A little tidbit about me. I grew up going to cheerleading competitions like this for my two sisters. I've been to so many of these things. They don't have a male uniform. But I don't really want this. I want sideline cheerleading. I want to hear what they say. Okay, Spirit Showdown. Wow, this is huge. Might be the weirdest rabbit hole we've gone down. So they're going to do all this shit. Then they're going to do some uh, lifts and tumbles and all. Yo, okay, throw them up there. Get the flyers up. That's cool. They're gonna. Oh, they should have flipped them the other way. Wow. That girl on the right messed up. None of them threw it into Scorpion. So just talking cheerleading here. Grew up watching this stuff every weekend. Here we go. Give me a Walla Walla cheer. God damn it. They went with the Blue Devil shit. Boring. Your name's Walla Walla. Do some fun stuff. That's all I have to say about Walla Walla. Let's move on to the the pitcher, the random player of the day. His name is Slow Joe Doyle, which is a fantastic nickname. Slow Joe. He was a pitcher for the New York Highlanders. New York Highlanders changed their name to the Yankees because all the people that wrote in the newspapers said Highlanders doesn't fit in any headlines. This blows. And they couldn't shorten it to the New York High, so they just called them the Yanks. And then officially they were like, all right, let's just call these guys the Yankees then. Um, slow Joe Doyle, he was really slow. He was like a, you know, a Yarbrough, uh, human rain delay. He took forever to pitch the ball. His real name was Judd. Real name wasn't even Joe. One of those nicknames where, like, they could have went with Slow Judd Doyle, but that's so bad. That's like being the Walla Walla Blue Devils, not the Walla Walla Warriors. So they went with Slow Joe Doyle. Kind of a cool nickname, unless people think you're dumb. Actually, maybe this guy was kind of dumb, so then it's double off, but I don't know that. And it seems kind of rude for me to just say that in case Slow, Do- Slow Joe's got any relatives. And they're like, see someone's talking about their grandpa. And then they're like, shit, he called grandpa slow. He wasn't slow. He's just slow pitcher, not slow minded. I would have been mad. Jake, check this out. Slow Joe Doyle nice shirt. Just realized that. had a ERA in the twos his first four years. Oh, wait, yeah. hold on. I got to show the got to show the people what I'm looking at. Okay, here we go. He had an ERA in the twos his first four years. But he didn't win any games, so they didn't like him. Mm. Here's not a, fu- a winner, Jim. Here's a fun stat. Um, he was the first 20th century pitcher to hurl a shutout in each of his first two starts. Oh. It's only been accomplished twice before that, and since it's been accomplished 11 times. What's that? I actually want to go find that. Buried in Tannersville, huh? Yeah, buried in Tannersville. 5-8, not bad. 5'8 pitcher. Damn. Slow Joe Doyle. <laughs> Slow Joe Doyle. He wasn't cause he was, it wasn't because of his brain. It was because he was uh, really slow. He was uh, like a Yarbrough out there. All right. S- slow Joe Doyle. I got uh, 13 minutes. Slow I won't. Joe Doyle. I want to find the list of all the other pitchers that have started their careers with two shutouts. When you know when you know. All right. Here it is. It's reference number five. Pitchers with shutouts in their first... Two or more starts. Well, this sucks. Take me to the actual page. Uh, page 275. Okay, 275, 275. Fucking scroll our asses off. 275, 275. We're still in the index? Page are we at? 23. Page 275. Okay, that didn't work. Doyle. Page two. Okay, that didn't work either. Motherfucker. So anyway, while I search for this, we got a pretty big day here at John Boy Media. Usually Fridays are supposed to be half days, easy days. We leave before the pregame show for the Yankees game, get out of here at like whatever, especially now I'm at page 463, especially since Thursdays in the last, now I'm at page 37. Pages 38 to 39 are not to be shown. It's two pages. What in the fuck's going on? Page 41. Okay. 
256 through 324 are not to be shown in this preview. So if anyone wants to find out, you have to buy the Saber Baseball list and record book. And then we could find out. But other than that, we can't. But today, we have a long Friday because we were doing two interviews that uh, are probably some of the bigger names we've ever had on the show in a weird roundabout way. Not players, though. I think I could just Google this. Pitchers with shutouts in first two starts. List. Uh, nope. And I'm over it. I'm over it. Anyway, back to slow Joe Doyle. Let's just go look at his debut. Let's see how many nicknames there were on the roster. He opened up. Yeah, it's pretty good. Complete game shutouts. His first two starts. August 25th. New York Yankees versus the Cleveland Naps. It rained. Mm, maybe that's why. Hilltop Park. All right. We have on the Cleveland Naps, now the Indians. The names we have are Jim Jackson, Ben Caffin, George Terry, Clark Knapp, Bunk. That's got to be a nickname, right? Bunk. Claude Elmer, Elmer's not a nickname. Wid, what's that short for? Willie Keeler, what up, Willie? Kid, it's got to be a nickname. Jimmy Williams, Frank George Red, Slow Joe Doyle. Pitched was Slow Joe Doyle and Bob Rhodes. So what nick? Bunk, Bunk's real name was William Miller Congalton. Why'd they call you Bunk? And he played baseball growing up and attracted the nickname Bunk, a name used by family even after his death. Well, that doesn't tell us why. We forgot to tell us why. Uh, Wid, real name was William, so they just went Wid on him. Looks like he got a scar in his face. Badass. Kid Elberfield. Real name, Norman Elberfield. Other nickname, the Tabasco Kid. Have we done this already? I think I cleared my cache, so I don't have like all the links I've clicked on. I feel like we've done Kid Elberton. The dirtiest, scrappiest, most... Pestiferous, most, what the, most rambunctious ball player that ever stood on spikes. This guy sounded like he sucked. He was 5'7", 158 pounds. Damn. He was spiked so often he wore a whalebone shin guard. How the fuck do you get that? Those were just for sale? You're like, yo, give me one of those whalebone shin guards. Let me get. Well, okay. Obviously, just regular shin guards came up when we want whalebone shin guards. It looks like there aren't any matches. Besides this book, this article. The only match is this article from 1943. And to sub, to view it, you got to subscribe. We're running into a lot of traps here. A lot of interesting stuff, just not going our way. The Tabasco Kid, though, that's cool. The Tabasco Kid. Because he was so fiery, you think? He was hot all the time? Anyway, we're done with them. Let's go to, let's go to the next game that our random player of the day pitched. It was against the Washington Senators, and he shut them down. They had uh, Rabbit. That's got to be a nickname. Can't give your son the birth name Rabbit. Lave. Don't know what that is. John, Charlie, Jack, Jake, Jack, Casey. And then we have, so this guy, Rabbit's name was George Charles Nil. Rabbit Nil. They don't have a player bio on him. No one knows anything about him. Wonder what he has a nickname. Rabbit Hill. Lave's, R- Lave's real name was Lafayette Napoleon Cross. Sounds like a goober. He's buried in Woodlawn Cemetery in Toledo, Ohio, for those that want to visit. He played for 21 years. How do you get the nickname Lave? Oh, his two brothers played too. Amos Cross and Frank Cross. Frank Cross sucked. 
How do you get the nickname Lave? What does it even mean? Uh, Lave. The family moved to Cleveland during Lave's childhood. Uh, Lay. Tell me why they called him Lave. Is Lave a nickname for Lafayette that I just don't know about? Holy smokes. Look at this. This is the... This is maybe the most unathletic. This is the dandiest. <laughs> Look at this baseball card. <laughs> Look at the way he's standing. Come on, Lave. I mean, this looks like a guy named Lafayette Napoleon came to town and they were like, hey, Lafayette Napoleon, you want to pose with this baseball bat? And he was like, baseball bat? What's the baseball bat? Okay. Come on, Lave. Played for 21 years. You can't be looking like that. Sad. Doing the whole cross family bad. What's happening? What's happening? Uh, I think that's all for Lave. Oh, no, no, no. Lave isn't even the player of the day. Sup, Bobby. Hey, Bobby Skinner. Sup, Bobby. Um, Troy Pike said, I think we did this rabbit hole before. I just got some... Wicked deja vu. I think so. You might be right, man. I don't know what's I don't know what's going on. I I think maybe we did. Anyway, um. So our our main guy, the guy that we're supposed to be talking about today, Slow Joe Doyle. He's most famous now in the card community because if you see this card that I have in the top right here, it's the Old Mill Cigarette Pack, uh, Texas South Atlantic Virginia, all that shit. And the, then when they printed it, the first version had a mistake on it. And here's the first version. And the mistake is that they confused him with another Doyle. And they put on the card on the bottom here, they put uh, Doyle New York national team, which he didn't play for. He played for the Highlanders, which is an American team. So the printer just straight up made a mistake. Uh, when he fixed it, he just took out the national, and you can see that the New York is kind of not centered anymore. Now that card goes for a ton of money because the printer made a mistake, which is just uh, – it's kind of like sometimes when people will put a typo in their tweet or their headline because they know that will be more engaged with, and people will comment on it and, and correct them, and then that pushes the engagement. And the algorithm, that's basically what this card guy did. He's like, oh, dude, I can make, we can make a million dollars old mill cigarettes. All we got to do is make an error and then catch it and act like we're really embarrassed about it. Just the oldest trick in the book by the old mill cigarette company when they got into the baseball card game. I think there's only eight of them exist and they're worth a ton of money. So, boom. Robert zero nine one six zero six one eight joined Periscope. He said, "John Boy, you're my savior." Doubt it. Appreciate that you may think that, but I don't think that you think that. But I doubt it. But I appreciate the sentiment. I'm gonna take a sip of my iced coffee. We'll do some ASMR for you guys. Beautiful. I'm not doing a book today, like I told you. I'm doing a documentary. And we're talking about cricket, we're talking about the test. It's, uh, Amazon came out with it. The Australian team got in trouble for cheating. The the um, They were using pine tar. The bowlers were using pine tar. And I'll just convert everything to baseball terms because that's probably the audience here. Bowlers, pitchers, they were using pine – They were not pine tar. They were using sandpaper to scuff up the, the ball. And they got caught, and they got, like, you know, the pitcher who did it got a, the fine. And then the Australian cricket team – they suspended the captain and the main player and the coach got fired for a full year. And then they made a documentary about trying to reclaim the pride of being an Australian ticket team, cricket team. Documentary is really good. But there's uh, one section on Virat Kohli, who's like the in best cricket player in the world right now, basically. And the biggest star internationally, like every sport that plays cricket, Every country that plays cricket knows who Virat Kohli is because he's like the biggest star in all of cricket. And for me, and for probably a lot of you, you probably have no idea who Virat Kohli is. And I was when I was watching the documentary, I was like, oh shit, 
There's just a whole world out there that is sports that I have zero idea about because America doesn't really follow cricket at all. But any el- anywhere else you go, it's there. So I have the little scene from it up that we can play uh, because I think it's interesting. And now whenever you run into someone and they're like, hey, do you know who Virat Kohli is? You could be like, oh, yeah, of course I do, dude. He's just the best cricket player ever. I think that guy looks like Reese Hoskins a bit. Josh Hazelwood on the Australian team. Australia have two early ones. And that'll mean the man, Virat Kohli. Wow, what pressure he's under now. You can just see his attitude. Look at him striding out to the crease. He's up for any challenge. The fans absolutely love him. I used to look at Virat and think he's he's got like Australian fired in him. He won't shy away from anything, but he's going to be certainly tested against a fired-up Josh Hazelwood and Mitchell Stark. Just from memory, he played an on-drive to get off the mark, and great players play on-drives. It's the hardest shot in the book to play. Your balance has got to be perfect. you got to watch the ball. Punter used to do it all the time. Get off the mark with an on-drive. I used to be batting at the other end. Got me. You're a freak. An on-drive is just when you do that. You just hit it, like, back up the middle towards the bowler. Beyond. Driven. That's the new coach of Australia. People get picked out of a billion and a half. You got to be pretty good. You look at Virat Kohli and you see energy all the time. And yet Virat Kohli, when he's batting, is a different entity. He's almost lost in his own perfection. Nicely worked away again. This is a man full of pure class. When we had Pat Cummins or Josh Hazelwood or Mitchell Stark bowling fast and swinging the ball, he just made it look like it wasn't what it was. That'll go all the way down. Yeah, so basically, this dude's just like the biggest star in cricket and knows it, walks around like an absolute stud, shit talks. Just the best. And then later in the doc, this dude, Tim Payne, he's the, the keeper he talked shit to him, and I guess Australia was like, yay, we talked shit back to him. Pretty cool documentary if you're interested in sports. You don't need to know much about cricket to know how it works. Also, baseball fans act like cricket is super complicated. Like, baseball's ten times more complicated than cricket. Cricket is pretty damn simple. If the ball rolls to the wall, you get four points. The ball goes over the fence, you get six points. You hit until you're out, and you can get as many points. You get as many points or runs as you can. If the ball doesn't go to the fence or over the fence, but gets past the defenders, they don't catch on a fly. You and your partner, the batter, you run back and forth, and you get a point for how many times you successfully run back and forth. It's like it's as simple as that. Now the the gameplay and the matches and and the way they do the scoreboard is confusing at first, but the actual rules of the game. Pretty easy. But I also lived in Australia, and I played it when I was in elementary school, so I kind of got involved at a younger age. But, yeah, Virat Kohli, now you know. And that's a good documentary. I think I watched it in, like, one day. Virat Kohli. They actually have new. Uh, they they're saving the sport of cricket by, by, by uh, reformatting it. Now there's like three, like there's test matches, and that's the cricket you know that's like days long, like takes like four days to play. Now they're doing. I forget what it's called. People would know that are cricket fans, but they last like three hours now. There's like time limits and shit. It's not as bad. Bam, takes two days to complete a test match. Yeah, it's really about endurance. And getting outs. Uh, is there going to be Wake and Jake after this? Yeah, they're set up. They're waiting for me to end. I'm ending now. This is over. They're going to Wake and Jake on the main channel. And then if you're a Talking Baseball patron, we're doing the series recap on Talking Baseball. Uh, right after that, at like 10 or so. So tune in. Enjoy. And then we're doing some interviews that you'll hear next week that we're kind of excited and nervous about. So that's exciting. See you guys later. Have a fantastic weekend. Go the ball. Goodbye. Farewell. Um, 
all the other things as well. See ya. What am I I'm supposed to do? Just drive around the fairgrounds and let it turn. Where am I gonna go? When the girl behind the counter at the coffee shop gets tired of me hanging around, nothing left to say, trying to get away. Oh. I'm bored out of my mind. And I've changed all the light bulbs and had this conversation about three times or more. Guess I walk around the grocery store. <laughs>